guys, this is Crively again with another product review and today we are going to have a look at the Lamy pen. Now what I will say is that I had another product uh, scheduled for review today, but I rescheduled my review schedule because I do anticipate this pen here to be something that very many people are interested in. And uh, in fact, I've been approached by very many people to do a review about this product and as said I rescheduled my review schedule a little bit because it's now late August. That pen here that is in here is the Lamy Ion, the new Lamy pen and it is not yet available from many or even any retailers I think as it is expected to hit stores uh, towards September. So I got this pen here from Lamy directly. It's already available from the Lamy website. Costs around 55 euro. I think it costs exactly 55 euro. And well, since I do think and since many people have asked me to do a review about this pen, because of course it's going to come out very soon in a week or two weeks, uh, I thought let me do a review of this pen right now so that you can get a glimpse and an idea what this pen is all about and then uh, yeah, make a more informed purchase decision or not. Here it is, the Lamy Ion lays in here is available in black and I think they call it olive silver. I have the black one here, um, comes with another, with a brochure here and uh, yeah, it is a new pen because it is not yet included in the brochure of the other Lamy pens. So you'll find all the other pens, the whole lineup here, but the Ion is not yet included in that brochure because as said, it's a new pen that is yeah just out. So let's take the pen out of the box and have a look at the pen. I'll tell you my first impression and then I'll tell you what I have heard online, what people were saying about the pen. So my first impression generally was like, wow, the pen is a lot larger than I would have anticipated it to be from the marketing materials that I have seen online. From the marketing materials that I have seen online, I anticipated the pen to be about the size of a Faber-Castell loom. But I will already say that right now and I'll do some size comparisons of the pen to other Lamy pens in a minute. It is a lot larger than a Faber-Castell loom. Then I have heard people online saying that the pen is, it's not a creative design idea. It looks like, um, and I'm quoting here, uh, Lamy 2000 and a Lamy Studio went into a room and got a baby and that's what came out. Well, I'm not sure if it's a fair criticism. It is probably not an entirely untrue criticism, but I don't know if it's a fair criticism because of course, Lamy took a tested and proven design here, made that into another pen, and I don't think that there's generally anything wrong with, yeah, going with the tried and tested if you do not, or if you have not intended to re-intent, uh, reinvent the wheel. Well, Lamy has not reinvented the wheel with this pen. This is a very classic shape, and it definitely does have some design elements that are familiar from other Lamy pens, such as the clip, the clip with the Lamy thing, with the Lamy logo here on the side, is of course very reminiscent of a Lamy 2000 that I have here. And when I uncap the pen, you will find a section that looks very similar to the section of a Lamy Studio. So well, yes, there are design elements of the Lamy 2000, there are design elements of the Lamy Studio, you see the Macrolon finish of the Lamy 2000 and this anodized aluminium finish of the Lamy Ion looks a bit similar. It is not exactly similar, but well, it looks they look reminiscent of each other. So well, you could say that there are design resemblances, but anyway, I think it's a very nice pen in its own right, the Ion here. So let's have a look at the pen. As said, first of all, it's not a small pen. The pen design itself is just a classic, very simple cylindrical shape that does taper slightly towards that side, but not a lot. You almost can't see it with your bare eye, but it does taper towards that side. 
Then the material, or let's have a look at the finial first. There is not actually a lot going on. You see the brushed anodized aluminium here is a flat top. We have a cap here. That cap, as said, has this silver shiny spring-loaded clip that works very well um, with the Lamy logo here. Then you have a small cap band here that flares down or tapers down a little bit towards that side here. Not sure how well you can see that. Uh, that is actually not brushed. The whole pen is made from anodized aluminium, by the way. It's an aluminium pen, so it's a pretty lightweight pen. So that here is, that band here is uh, glossy. It's slightly glossy. Yeah, and then the barrel just continues in its cylindrical shape. As said, tapers down a wee bit down here and then a flat end of the pen. It's a very minimalist pen. I like the black. I think in, in silver it looks also very classy, also very minimalist. I like this very nice brushed finish that is actually really hard to capture. Uh, you see I have slightly wet hands, so it does pick up some fingerprints, but just a little bit. Depending on how you hold the pen into the light, you do see more or less of the surface structure. I find this surface structure very nice. Yeah, I said, um, I already said it. I find this a very nice minimalist pen. I really like this minimalist pen. Straight, clean lines, not a lot going on, but yeah, I find it just looks great. You uncap the pen. Oh, sorry, that was the camera. You uncap the pen. It's a push-on cap, has an inner cap here to prevent the nib from drying out. You do expose a fairly large section that more or less integrates into the barrel of the pen. It's just like that the, the brushing or the finish of the material of the section is slightly different. Um, yeah, well, you could have made that all looking all the same, but also I don't find there's anything wrong with that if you can actually really see where the section is, where to uh, unscrew the pen in order to refill it with the T10 Lamy cartridges or the Lamy converters. So you actually see that there is a section. As said, yes, that section does look fairly similar to a Lamy Studio section. I find that section, by the way, super comfortable. And you already see that this is a fairly large pen, a fairly long pen. I have fairly large hands and even in my larger hands, this is a large pen. So yeah, it's a large pen and it's a thick pen. It's a nice chunky section, tapers down here a little bit so you can find your grip. You can basically find your grip everywhere. It's like super comfortable because it should actually work really for any grip because you can grab the pen down here where it's a little bit narrower or you can grab it up here where it's a little bit thicker and you can really hold it the way it is comfortable just for you. We then have this newly designed Lamy nib that looks a bit different than the other Z50 Lamy nibs do. It's a fine nib here, slit, breather hole, says Lamy. Then I've read a lot of speculation on the internet about whether you can swap out that nib with the Z50 nibs of the Lamy Safari. Let me answer the question for you. Yes, you can. The feed is exactly the same. This thing here, this nip, cons nip feed construction thing is exactly the same. I won't swap the nip live right now here because uh, the pen is actually inked up and I don't want to get blue fingers at the moment. But I think, I'll, I'll promise you, I tried it. I had that black nip on that pen. Looks a bit odd, but well, it's, you know, it's a matter of taste. So you can swap the nip. So you can put a Z50 gold nip on the iron if you if you want if you want to do that. So, yeah, you can swap out those nibs. Next, posting. The pen does post. It posts fairly securely. It posts pretty deep onto the barrel. You see that? That's how deep it posts. Since it's an aluminium pen, it still remains fairly balanced. It gets slightly top heavy, but not very much top heavy. It's not very noticeable. Um, so you can post it, you can write with it posted. However, since it is, as said, a long pen, I totally do not find it necessary, uh, necessary to post that pen. But well, if you would like to write your pens posted, you can post that pen. 
you unscrew the pen like this, expose a lot of threads, fairly chunky, beefy looking section. Also the heft or the weight of the pen is definitely here at the section. This is a very lightweight, pretty thin aluminum barrel here. The standard T10 Lamy cartridges as said, you can also use a converter. So put the pen back together like this, that all works very well. Yeah, the weight distribution of the pen is actually, yeah, the weight should be here because this is heavier, but when the pen is put together, I'd say it's not very front heavy. It is a very balanced pen. I mean, it's a pleasant writer. I really like writing with that pen and yeah, it does feel very balanced. I'd say the weight, the weight center lays somewhere here around that point. So where it should lay actually, very comfortable pen to hold. Let's do a couple of size comparisons. As I've already said, it is a pen that is a lot larger than I would have it expect, expected it to be from the marketing pictures. Compare it to a Lamy Safari here. You see it's even a tad longer than a Lamy Safari. As said, I thought it's around the size of a Faber-Castell Loom or something like that, but it's actually a pretty large pen. And if you see it beside my Lamy 2000 here, you see that it's also considerably longer than uh, a Lamy 2000. We uncap the pens and see what all that looks like now. This is the Ion, this is the Safari, and this is the 2000 here. So you see also like that, the Lamy Ion is definitely the longest of all those pens and uh, we can post them here. We post the 2K and post the Ion and post Alami Safari, which is something that I normally don't do, but some people may like to write their safaris posted. Now the Safari is a bit longer, but like, yeah, well, I think you get the overall idea. The Ion is no small pen. It is a long pen. It's not a very heavy pen. Let me see if I can compare it a bit to the Lamy 2000. Yeah, it's heavier than a 2000 as well, because of course this is aluminium, a light metal, but this is much roll on or plastic. So it's a long pen, it's a chunky pen. If you like slim and slender pens, this is not the pen for you. If you like larger, chunkier pens, this might be a pen for you. I like the design a lot. As said, let's do a writing sample towards the end. And for that, we zoom in a little bit. I can already tell you that the writing experience with this newly designed nib but yeah, as said, I think it's the basis of a Lamy Z50. The writing experience of this pen does not differ a lot from the writing experience with the regular Z50 nibs. This is a fine nib here. I don't have a fine La uh, Lamy Z50 inked up right now, but um, I've compared it a week ago or so and I found them to be similar in line with. So the Z50 Safari All-Star Studio fine have the same line with and this fine here. They write medium wet, not overly wet, not overly dry. It's just an all right, nice, pleasant writer, just as you would expect from the Lamy Safaris. If you have a Lamy Safari, a Lamy All-Star, any Lamy pen with a Z50 nib on, expect the same writing experience then with the Lamy Ion. So I hope the review was useful to you. Maybe it helps you to make a purchase or non-purchase decision of the soon uh, available pen from your favorite pen retailer. Um, as said, I hope the review was helpful to you and I'll see you at the next review. Bye bye.